We're gonna be rich. Hey everybody, Language Hacker here. Um, with a new expansion coming out, we've seen almost uh, close to half the cards revealed now, and I wanted to share my views on um, how powerful I think these cards are gonna be in the uh, competitive meta. So enjoy the video. Let's start from the start, from what they've shown um, on the stream. Supreme Archaeology. So this is the new Warlock quest. Uh, quest, draw 20 cards, reward, Tome of Origination, which means your hero powers change to draw a card and it costs zero. Um, that effect is very powerful, but drawing 20 cards is really kind of yucky for a quest. And after you've drawn 20 cards, there's not that many cards left in your deck to be used. So it's pretty cool, but I don't think it's going to be played too much. Uh, I guess I can go for like rating system too. So I'm not going to do like a full 1 to 5 rating system. I usually do that when the, like, the full set's revealed, but I just wanted to go over something uh, just to get some content out. So I'll give them like a playable, like will be played, it's good. It won't be played, it's bad, or it kind of depends on what else comes out. This, I don't think will be played, even if there's like, there'd have to be some really, really crazy support coming out for it. Um, but right now, I just don't think it's powerful enough. I guess you can use it with Plot Twist, though. That's a good point. I know Kibler was playing around with that. Maybe this makes Plot Twist playable? Interesting. I'm not convinced, because I still feel that would be a little inconsistent but it could work i but my first my first instinct is that it probably won't be good enough all right next questing explorer two mana two three neutral minion uh battle cry if you control a quest draw a card um this just seems powerful it won't be running like you know standard aggro decks or anything like that but in any quest deck this seems just fine right you play the, the you play the quest on one you hope to curve into this on two because you're normally down a card because you've kept the quest in your opening hand now and this will give you a bit of refill and some early um, minions to, to contest board with. So I think this is a very good card and it will see play. Um, it'll depend on which quests you play, but if quests you play, then this will definitely see play. Next, Restless Mummy. Four mana, three, two minion uh, for Warrior. Rush and Reborn. And Reborn is the new mechanic that uh, we see in Saviors of Uldum where it's when a minion dies, it gets resurrected with one health. So when this mummy dies, it will be reborn as a four mana, three, one rush. I think this card is very powerful. I think it will see play. Um, it's just, I think it's just gonna be included in most warrior decks at this point though. We currently see Milish Commander in, in Warrior. And this is, I think, almost strictly better than Milish Commander. It lets you do six damage in total for the same amount of mana. And it also lets you split up the damage. So three, one way, three, another way. So not completely strictly better, but I, I think very, very close to strictly better than Militia Commander. Plague of Death. Um, nine mana, pre-spell. Silence and destroy all minions. Very, very powerful. Um, this would require Priest to have a very playable deck, but if Priest has a playable deck that's not like aggressive and it's more combo or slow or control oriented, this would be very, very powerful in it. Um, with Shadow Visions gone, it means that you can get fewer of these, but I mean, by turn 9, chances are you've drawn one of these. So I think the card is very powerful, but I don't know if it'll see play just because I don't know what a Priest deck currently looks like. And for Priest to line up against all the other decks, it would need something a bit more broken than it currently has. Because the other decks are going to be pretty powerful. Like We're still going to be seeing Cyclone Mage, Bomb Warrior, uh, stuff like that. And this really won't deal well with that. I mean, this is too slow for... Um, do we still have Mass Hysteria, actually? If we have Mass Hysteria, that plus this could help it against Mage, actually. We still do have Mass... Yeah, yeah, this isn't rotating out. What am I talking about? Maybe, maybe we get there. I don't know. But the card is powerful. I, I think it will see play if, if any priests do see play. Evil Totem. Two mana, zero, two, Shaman Minion, and it's a totem. Um, at the end of your turn, add a Lackey to your hand. This seems very powerful. It gets cleared very easily to health. It can't be pinged off, which is nice. But a lot of classes right now get stuff on the board fairly quickly. Um, we're thinking warriors with one drops. Even mages can tempo out minions to contest this. And then just like all the normal tempo decks. Um, you might still be able to get like... Uh, okay, worst case, you get one lackey, right? Because it's at the end of your turn. Sometimes you get two and then that's kind of nice. And it's just an extra lackey generator. So if you think of as... If you compare this to something like Cable Rat, Cable Rat is a 2-mana 1-1, doesn't really contest that much. This this stat line might let it um, survive a bit more, which might get you two lackeys, which is nice. 
And just having an extra way to generate lackeys will be nice, especially with the new Shaman card we'll be seeing later, the uh, the Wasp. I think this card's pretty good. Lackeys in general are like super nutty, so I, I, th I think this will see play. Jar Dealer. One mana, one one uh, minion, neutral. Death Rattle and a run random one cost minion to your hand. Um, at a glance, this doesn't have a crazy amount of crazy uh, amount of applications. Um, the first thing that I thought of was Magic Carpet, obviously, but that's not really run in much. We've seen it a little bit in, in Pogorog, but mostly it's been run in the Zoo. Um, so in Zoo decks, this could help quite a bit. Like you draw this, it, it counts as two minions, right? You have like this, and then the other minion generates. So it's it's like nice refill without having to tap too. So I, th I think this card is good. I think it'll see play, but I think it'll be in very few decks though. Like it'll fit in Zoo, I'm sure. But other than that, I, I can't see what else you would run this in. Maybe like old Hunter Quest, but that's not in standard anymore. Shaman Quest, Corrupt the Waters. Quest, play six Battlecry cards, and the reward is Heart of Vernal, um, which upgrades or changes your hero power to hero power. Your Battlecry is triggered twice this turn. So it's not a passive, it, it's an active. Like you spend two mana and it'll double Battlecry this turn. I think this is pretty powerful. I think this will see play. I, I, I'm struggling to find a deck that can use this the best. I mean, there's clearly like a crazy amount of Battlecry minions, and, and a lot of them are very impactful. So if you can double them, it's crazy. But having the consistency of this being in your opening hand, plus being having to play six Battlecry minions while still like fighting for board or like trying not to die, and then you still have to do crazy stuff with the Battlecry's after to actually win games, right? I can see this being fine against like Bomb Warrior. It'll be a bit more difficult against like Mage decks, but maybe the new Plague will help with that. Yeah, it's true. You can't do Hero Power and uh, Heart, uh, you can't Heart of Vernal, like the Hero Power and play Shutter Walk unless you've saved coin the whole game. And I don't think there are any coin generators currently available, which is still fine. I mean, Shutter Walk by its, I mean, that would be too crazy if, if you could do that. Um, but Shutter Walk by itself should be fine. Like if you're running all the other Battle Cries, the Shutter Walk should be good too. I think this card is good, but I think it'll um, also depend on what other battle cries we see. I don't know if we can make a perfectly cohesive deck with like a very solid late game plan with the current battle cry minions available, because you can't do like old school Shutterwalk stuff, right? Like Glacial Shards were to... Do we still have Burlock? No, we don't. Because like the only freeze minion we have right now is what, Frost Alley, which is a little too slow. Earthquake, seven mana Shaman spell. Deal five damage to all minions, then deal two damage to all minions. So this can help deal with sticky minions, death rattles. Uh, we talked about Mechru a bit earlier, but death rattles in general, this will help with. It won't kill something like a Cairn fully, but it can definitely help with that. I like this quite a bit. If you end up having all this AoE and Shaman, you can afford to run a lot of Battlecry minions we were, we were discussing earlier with the quest, maybe. Because now you have Scheme, you have Earthquake. Already those are really powerful effects. This will help a bit with aggro too, because sometimes Scheme, like like I said, Scheme doesn't always clear everything. This could help you clear everything. Scarabag if we see Zoop resurface. Uh, Snip Snap, there's some applications there as well. I think this card's pretty powerful, but same thing, it'll, it'll depend on whether or not we see a, I, it doesn't have to be a quest shaman, but it'll depend on whether we see a, a control shaman. Because you wouldn't really run this in mid range or or aggro, right? And control shaman does exist right now, but it's not. I wouldn't say it's like tier one. Okay, moving on. Embalming. Four mana warlock spell. Destroy a minion. Shuffle three worthless imps into your deck. This adds more cards into your deck, so you can draw more cards with the Warlock quest, but otherwise this doesn't seem very good. And you can like draw these Worthless Imps with Sense Demons, but they're just one mana, one, one demons. And there's not that much Warlock, uh, sorry, Demon Synergy going on. Like you have Inferno, which is cool and all, but... And you have stuff like, um, where is it? Demon Fire, but other than that, I mean Void Analyst too. But it just feels too, like, wonky. I, I don't think it'll be... I, I don't think this card will see play. Unless there's some, like, in interesting interaction we see come out that we haven't noticed yet um, with the new cards, but I don't think this card will see play. Uh, and here's the Shaman Wasp I was talking about. So it's called Weaponized Wasp. 
3 mana 3-3 three, three Shaman Minion, and it has the Beast Tag. Battle Cry, if you control a Lackey, which means you have it on the board, uh, deal 3 damage. This card is insane. Especially since we've seen Shaman have one more uh, Lackey Generator. And perhaps there's even more. I don't know what other cards are going to be revealed. There's still quite a bit of the set left. So if there's even another Shaman Generator, this card's going to be insane. But even just with, like, Cable Rat and Evil Totem, this could see play. This card is insane. Broken Zealot. One mana, two, one, Paladin Minion. Whenever you summon a minion, gain plus one attack. Um, I'll talk about these three cards kind of together. They showed them all at once, too. So they're... I'm assuming the reason these cards are statted the way they are is because they want you to use cards like Never Surrender, which is released in the last expansion, um, to help buff them out of like the one health range. Um, because at one health, it's very, very easy to kill off, right? Um, this isn't like Arena where we have to worry about pink classes, but I mean, like, it, it still is a thing. Pink classes will deal with it, like Rogue is in the meta. It's weak to stuff like Dynomatic and Warpath and whatnot. So I'm, I'm very skeptical skeptical about that. And the other thing you can do is run the, the new 5-mana spell, which actually wouldn't be here. I don't know why I'm looking there. The new 5-mana spell for Paladin which is not here, and the other cards aren't loading. Great. Basically, it gives all your minions Divine Shield. Or is it three mana? Wait, no, that wasn't part of the set, right? Am I going crazy? Righteousness, there we go. Yeah, it, it exists, okay. The five mana give your minions Divine Shield. This could help a bit too, to make them like tankier, but it just, it's so slow. Like, there's no way this works. So Never Surrender is like one of the only real applications with this. And even then, it requires a bit of a setup, and you're just not being aggressive enough, right? So I don't think, like, combing these together with that is, is good enough. Now, so I, I think this card's not that great. If, if you run some sort of aggro paladin by itself, this could still be fine with Never Surrender. Um, you just play this on one. If they, if they don't deal with it, you know, you, you do some more damage, you develop more minions. So I think this card is fine as an aggressive card. But otherwise, it, it, it still seems kind of questionable. And I don't think just Aggro Paladin is going to be tier 1 from the cards we've seen. So I'm going to put this as like a maybe, depending on what else is released. Next, Sandwasp Queen. 2 mana, 3, 1 Paladin minion. It's a beast. Battlecry, add 2, 2, 1 Sandwasp to your hand. Kind of the same thing. Like, you're getting value out of this, but it's so weak. And... I know the meta is going to change, but if you look at the current meta, we have Mage, we have Rogue, we have Warrior. They deal with one health minions very, very easily. Very easily. So it feels like what kind of value are you really getting out of this? Not that much. So I, I don't really think this card is going to see play. Yeah, it's good value. You get three things from one card, but it doesn't seem powerful. And then finally, Salhut's Pride. Three mana, three one, Paladin minion, Beast. Death Rattle, draw two one health minions from your deck. This, I think, is a bit more viable than the other two cards, primarily because tutoring is very powerful. Um, you already have some tutor effects in, in Paladin. We see them in decks like Holy Wrath Paladin and uh, Christology as well. Well, Christology and Holy Wrath Paladin, that's part of the tutoring. And having more tutor cards to make it even more consistent is probably not that bad. And this card can contest board while also doing that. Christology is, is a nice cheap way of doing it, but it doesn't actually put anything on the board. This is an interesting way of doing it, but it might tutor kind of the same stuff. Like it'll, they both draw novice engineers. So you might have to make the deck a little bit different to make sure you, you have enough cards to tutor, but this might not even be good enough to be used. Um, th this is a maybe for me. I don't think it's the nuts, but I don't think it's necessarily garbage tier. Um, but it would require a bit of a rework of the current deck we see. It's the Plague of Madness. This is this is kind of cute. Uh, one mana, this is the Rogue Plague. Uh, one mana Rogue spell, Plague of Madness. Each player equips a 2-2 two -two knife with Poisonous. This reminds me of, I think Firebat mentioned this too, this reminds me of Weapons Project. Um, where you can do something like Weapons Project Harrison, or Weapons Project Weapon Removal. But I don't know if Rogue wants to be doing that sort of combo -y stuff. Because Rogue, Rogue usually goes for more tempo-oriented game plan. You could run this, I guess, with Harrison for some, like, card draw, but it comes out on turn 6. You, you get the 2-2 two, two Knife with Poisonous, which might actually be decent, and the Harrison. But it seems like kind of a weird combo, because you usually have stuff to do as Rogue anyways. In War, you want it because you, you run out of stuff to do. So it feels kind of weird in Rogue, and if you're not running it with Weapon Removal, 
Giving your opponent a 2-2 poisonous knife doesn't seem great if you're spending the mana for it. So I'm kind of, I'm also skeptical about this card. I think this probably won't see play. Psychopomp. This is a fun name. Uh, four mana, three one, priest minion. Battle cry. Summon a random friendly minion that died this game and give it reborn. This gives me a sort of resurrect priest feel, but without like old school barns priest, because this also joins the pool. Um, I feel like this is still a pretty powerful tool. Like you play a cleric, you play a blade master, you play something else on curve, and then just jam this. This is pretty powerful. Right, like Blade Master comes back as a four seven, um, even Claire coming back as a one three with Reborn. It's difficult to kill both sides of it, so you can like trade it off and heal it because it when it's Reborn it'll be like a one mana one one. I think this is I think this is very powerful. Um, same with the other card, like the the Plague I was talking about. We'll need more than just this. I don't think this card is enough to make the priest viable, but this this helps quite a bit. I think this is very powerful. Um, to reiterate, Reborn, what this does is it resurrects. Uh, with one health the first time it dies. So with this, let's say you played a cleric on one and it died, and you pass on two, you pass on three, you play this. It'll summon a, a Northshire cleric with a death rattle that when the cleric dies, it'll be reborn as a one mana one one. Um, but it still has the health of three. It just, it, um, it can be healed up to three health, but it, it comes back with just one health. Kind of like a, a paladin redemption. Plague of Murlocs. I like this uh, this animation with the Murloc on the left just kind of running with his hands like dangling behind him. Uh, three mana Shaman spell. Transform all minions into random Murlocs. All minions, so both sides of the board, if you have anything on your side of the board, and if your opponent has anything on their side of the board. It's actually really interesting. This is very interesting. This could actually see playing in two different types of decks. One is Control, this is obviously pretty cool because now you can deal with Giant Conj, which is a thing that Shaman has struggled, struggled with. Um, lately in the meta. So this gives you a way to deal with that. Even if you don't hard run this, if you run cards like Haunting Visions with Spirit of the Frog, this is also just an option. So this is this is even just buff to Haunting Visions or Shaman, or like Control Shaman in general, um, just by the fact that it exists as a card. But you could run one or two copies as well. Um, most Murlocs, not all of them, if we review Murloc here, will, will die to something like a Storm. Well, it would have to be a spell power storm or a, um, a vast majority of them do die to storm though. Um, actually, no, that's a lie. I'd say a bit over half, maybe like three fifths, but like that plus scheme would be a full clear, right? Or even that plus blood mage storm would be fine. Even just turning stuff into murlocs, like your opponent plays an Ed one, you murloc it, it's like a two, three now. You're like, eh, okay, cool. So I, I think this is a very powerful card to control. Um, now the other application I'm looking at is that you could also run this in an aggressive murloc deck for a, kind of a similar thing where you can run a bit of like tokeny minions that don't necessarily have to be murlocs and you can just play this to transform into murlocs kind of like a weird evolve but at the same time you can like change your opponent's board if they try contesting and you could even run stuff like hungry crab with this right in your in your aggro murloc deck because you could play this then crab their minion and even if they don't do that, if you run small tokeny murlocs, you could crab your own minion. Um, we saw later on there's a one mana one one murloc reborn. You could crab that, and that would just be like pretty powerful. So there's there's some interesting applications of this. I'm excited to see this card. Armagedillo, as Ixar says, or Armagedillo, as, as most other people will say. This card looks pretty interesting. Um, so this is a warrior legendary minion, six mana four seven, and it's a beast. Taunt, and at the end of your turn, give all taunt minions in your hand plus two plus two. Um, this would have been pretty cool back in like uh, old quest warrior where you had a bunch of taunt minions. The stats on this are really nice and the buff is really nice too. Like if you hit two minions, that's already like really, really good. And this also means not with this card by itself, but in general um, with more support for the taunt spells, like, like the taunt mechanic, if you have more like hand buff taunt stuff, you could run subpar taunts just to get buffed. Like. I'm not saying this will be the case, but you could just run this card. You buff it once with like, because this is still like a decent stat line and it has taunt. This becomes a one mana three for taunt, which is still pretty good. Now I'm not to say that this is better than the current bomb warrior, but maybe we see some different, you know, option of a uh, warrior come up as well.
There's, there's lots, um, I think Ixer on the devs were saying that you could take Org in a different direction too if you don't want to go the bomb route. So I don't think this is going to like completely change the face of Warrior in the current meta, but I, I do think this card is pretty powerful. I want to say I, I think it'll see play because it's powerful, but I don't think people are going to stray away from the bomb Warrior. So because of that, we probably won't see it. Um, but I, I still think it might be powerful. And, and as more sets come out, this can get better too, right? More taunt minions are released and stuff like that. It's possible. Sir Finley of the Sands. Um, so this is a Paladin minion, two mana, two, three, Murloc. Battlecry, if your deck has no duplicates, discover an upgraded hero power. And this upgraded hero power will be what Driscar Trueheart used to give you. So, um, or like the Baku Gen hero power. Oh no, it would be the Baku hero powers, not the Gen hero powers. I think this is really powerful. The card itself. Again, the deck might not be the nuts, but this card is super powerful, right? Just getting an upgraded hero power on turn two. You still have the deck restriction, obviously, but just the stat line's fine. It's a Murloc. You could even fit in some Murlocs if you try to make some sort of aggressive Paladin deck too. And the upper, the upgraded here powers are the nuts. The thing is, it all it'll be it's kind of like old Finley too, right? Obviously, it's an upgraded hero power, but it gives you three options. So if you get something like you know armor up, heal, and totem, you're you're suddenly not that aggressive anymore. Granted, that's not going to be the case most of the time, but I, I think this is interesting because it can make the games feel very different too, just based on what hero powers you're offered. I don't think this card will see that much play. I think it, we'll have to see how many more cards are, are available for some sort of Paladin deck, because I don't think you can make a control Highlander deck. So this would have to be a bit more mid range or aggressive. And if you do make it mid range or aggressive, you would need like a good amount of aggro cards to, to fit in the deck. Expired Merchant, uh, two mana, two one, Warlock minion. Battlecry, discard your highest cost card. Death Rattle, add two copies of it to your hand. This card is insane. Like, this is absolutely nuts. Like, it's it's incredibly, like, the value is just insane. The problem is whether or not you can play some sort of value-oriented Warlock. Um, we've seen people kind of test around with it at the start of this expansion. Uh, I know I spent a lot of time trying to see if we could run, make a handlock work for, for worlds, but it just, I couldn't make it work. And I don't think a lot of other people could either. You can still make a deck that's decent, but it, I don't think it'll be tier one, at least with the cards we have available. But this card is insane. It's just, I don't think they'll see play in what we um, currently see in, in, war, in terms of Warlock decks. I think we'll be seeing more aggressive style, uh, like zoo archetypes. Making mummies. This, this is a cute picture too. Um, so this is the Paladin quest. Play five reborn minions and you get Emperor Raps as the reward. And this is a hero power that summons a 2-2 copy of a friendly minion. So it can copy reborn, it can copy death rattle, it can copy rush, charge, whatever. But uh, the copy will be a 2-2. The hero power is powerful, but I don't think Paladin can play a sort of like control a game plan right now. Like the only decks we see are Mech Paladin and Holy Wrath right now. And I don't think we've seen enough support printed for aggro yet or control to be able to line up against the other tier one decks. So while this effect is powerful, um, I don't think we have enough support for, for a deck like this just yet. Um, there might be some more cards revealed in this expansion or in future expansions that can make it viable, but I, I don't think this currently fits in what we have um, available. Uh, like, I'm sure there must be more Reborn Minions printed as well. We haven't seen that many, and this says play five of them. So I'm assuming they're releasing enough this set that'll let you play it. Um, it's just a matter of whether or not those Reborn Minions are going to be good or good enough, and if you can build the rest of the deck around that. Mermi. And this is one of those Reborn cards. So this is a neutral 1-mana one 1-1 one minion. It's a Murloc. Um, and I believe the Reborn version will also be a Murloc. Um, but yeah, just Reborn. 1-mana one 1-1. One, one, comes back as a 1-1. One, one. Um, this card's pretty powerful. It's basically the Mechra with the Murloc tribe, which will be good in some stuff like Murloc Shaman. I don't think Murloc Paladin is viable, but maybe there's just some random Murloc cards we don't see yet uh, in the set that haven't been released. I mean, this card just seems fine. It seems like a good aggressive card. Yeah. Like, you could even run this in Zoo as well, right? Like, Zoo runs Mechru, although it might run some other mech cards. This is also just like a nice sticky minion. Maybe we see Abusive make a comeback. Interesting. Works with Magic Carpet as well. So I think this is a, a decent aggressive card. Um, this is also one of the options of what a Murloc can, uh, what Murloc your board can be transformed into with Plague of Murlocs. So it is kind of annoying that your opponent's minions, uh, opponent's like deck could become death rattly, but I mean one mana one one's probably better than the other stuff you were 
devolving out of yeah it'll also buff tide color murloc tide color that's a good point and it's another one mana murloc that you can get off of angler or play with angler to make the chains nicer so i think i think this is just a good card i think this will see play bazaar mugger it's a five mana three five rogue minion rush and battle cry at a random minion from another class to your hand rush is powerful Five mana, three, five, not so powerful. And it'll give you something from outside your class, which means that if you're in a rogue mirror, you still get something that activates Vendetta. The problem is this is a little slow. It comes in on turn five and it gives you value, but it's not really aggressive. And we're not really in a spot where rogue is playing like a super, I mean, rogue does have value cards, but the value cards they have also generate tempo right now. And this doesn't really gen... I mean, it does generate tempo, but it's not super powerful. I think it's a good card, but I don't think it's good enough to replace some of the cards we currently see in more aggro style rogues we see. If they add like another Vendetta type card, where it's like if you're holding a, you know... I mean, I guess... But even with Underbelly Fence, Underbelly Fence is too slow. Like, you don't want to be playing an Underbelly Fence on turn 6 or 7 after playing this, right? So if they add some other burgle effects like that that benefit off you having burgled cards, this this might be better. But I, I don't think this is, I don't think this will see play, or I, I don't think it'll be tier one in any case. Desert Obelisk, uh, neutral minion, five mana zero five. If you control three of these at the end of your turn, deal five damage to random enemy. So if you have three Desert Obelisks on the field, at the end of the turn, all of three of them will do five damage to random enemy. Which seems powerful, but it's kind of difficult to set up considering you can only run two in your deck, right? Naturally. So you'll have to run like duplication effects, which I don't think that many classes have access to. So you can run like Lab Recruiter and Rogue. You can run the Paladin Hero Power that, from the new quest. But I don't think this is going to be super crazy. This card is interesting, but I don't think it's viable with what we currently see. Maybe there's some really nutty... Um, is there some way to make like a bunch of one ones of these in your hand and play them? You could run this with like Priest with Spirit of Bonsomni, but it just feels way too slow and it doesn't feel like Priest can actually make this combo work. You might be able to fit into some Meme Resurrect Priest, that's true. But I don't think this will see competitive play. Evil Recruiter. 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three, uh, Warlock minion. Battle Cry. Destroy a friendly lackey to summon a 5-5 five, five demon. Um... We've been told earlier that Warlock will have some more lackey cards, um, or lackey generators, I'm assuming. Because this with Cable Rat isn't enough to warrant, like, you'll high roll a bit with it, but I don't think it's it's that good. Oh, you still have Evil Genius, too. Oh, my God. No, this card is insane. Like, th this is just actually insane. Like, Zoo's already, like, almost good enough, but th this makes it, oh, my God. This is just super powerful. Like, it's actually insane. I mean, just read it. It's it's super powerful. Like, th let's say four mana for 8-8 eight, eight stats, right? Because you have to sacrifice the lackey. You don't have to do it on the same turn. Like, you could just play the lackey on, on three with Evil Genius and then play this on four. But this this is insane. Yeah, this card's definitely going to see play. What if you could even... Oh, maybe, maybe... Maybe you could make some sort of Control Warlock work where you still run like lackey generators and you use this as sort of like your bridge to late game. This is interesting. I think this card is absolutely insane. Next, um, six mana, seven, five, warlock minion, demon tribe, rift cleaver, battle cry, destroy a minion and your hero takes damage equal to its health. Stat line is like Illidan. And Illidan doesn't really see play, but the effect on this is is kind of powerful, right? It's like a Siphon Soul, except instead of healing three, you take damage equal to its health. Pretty, like, tempo swingy. This could see play in Control Shaman. You probably won't see this in Zoo, because it's quite a bit of a dead draw early. It becomes a bit more powerful, and it is a sticky minion, so maybe you could even put this in Zoo, because, like, the effect is, is decent. But this could give uh, this this could be an extra tool for for like a slower warlock to uh, to be built as well. Pretty interesting. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a Lich King Obliterate a Lich King card. You're right. Hmm. I think this might see play. I don't think like this this card is decent. I don't think it's like the nuts because 
I, I guess I'm just, I'm kind of trying to be conservative because I'm not sure if Control Warlock will be a thing, but if it is, this, this could very well be running it. Healing is kind of one of the limiting factors for that. So take, like, I, I like the flavor on this too, right? Like, it fits with the, like, damaging yourself game plan, like, what's the word? The damaging yourself theme of Warlock. So I think the effect is powerful, but it, again, it depends on whether or not uh, the deck becomes playable. Next, Bloodsworn Mercenary. Three mana, three, three, warrior minion. Battlecry, choose a damaged friendly minion and summon a copy of it. So this is uh, reminiscent of Mirage Caller. That's what it was called. Thanks. Oh, oh, because it doesn't say death rattle. Right, right. So it reminds me of this. The difference is it summons a copy of the minion, not a one, one copy. And it has to be damaged, but Warrior has ways to damage their own minions. This is really, I mean, this is a great value card. You can even use it just like for tempo, right? You can use it on taunts too. I mean, I, you can literally use it on everything. I'm just listing stuff that it's, it's pretty powerful with. Obviously death rattles, taunts. This card's just good. I think it'll see play. Maybe not in Bomb Warrior, but in different variations of the deck. You could even run this in control depending on how much value you want in your deck. Like if you start running cards like Karen, obviously, or more or like big taunts, you could do this. It's actually kind of interesting. Grom as well. Do you have a way to make Grom cheap though? Yeah, I mean, people are saying you could do like Alex on nine and then you can do like Leroy in a rage, um, Rampage, Bloodstorm Mercenary, and then you get 22 burst damage after playing Alex, which is like technically a combo. But how frequently will you have that available? Maybe frequently enough, you still have access to like Pyro, Commanding Shout, Acolyte stuff, but I don't know if it's gonna be like the new Raging work in OTK. I think it's a good card, but I think it's gonna depend on, on the meta and what kind of warrior deck still remains at the top, which will likely still just be Mom Warrior. So it probably won't see play, but I'll put it under maybe. Fish Flinger, uh, two mana, neutral minion, three, two Murloc. Battle Cry, add a random Murloc to each player's hand. I think this is nice. If you look at the current amount of, let's get away from wild. If you look at the current amount of Murlocs available for stuff like, I, I'm gonna, mainly gonna lean towards Murloc Shaman because that's technically the only viable Murloc deck right now. You don't wanna play this on two. You can play this on two. And then you can play this on two. And those are like the main two drops you have. And this isn't the greatest two drop. This you don't necessarily want to play on two because it, you know, if it dies, you feel kind of sad. And this you just lose a bunch of value if you play it on two. So having a an extra Murloc to play in the deck like this is insane. And on the and on top of that, it also adds a Murloc to your hand. So it's it's like a it's a generator as well. I think this is very good. This, this is a very good card. You won't see this in like every deck. This would be probably pretty interesting in arena too. But it, it, in constructed, this would be pretty good in, in, in Murloc Shaman. Some good refill, especially with Hagatha too, you just get more value. This this card's gonna see play for sure. You give your opponent Murloc too, but I mean, your opponent's not gonna use the Murloc as efficiently as you are, unless you give them an Angler, and then you play another one, you give them another Murloc, and then they go off, but that seems unlikely. Next, tip the scales. Eight mana, um, Paladin spell. Summon seven Murlocs from your deck. So the effect is very powerful, my concern with this is that it costs a mana. So if you're looking at some sort of aggro deck, this isn't gonna work because it's too slow, which means you'd have to put in some sort of mid-rangey decks if you're running Murlocs. Now the thing is, are there gonna be good mid-rangey Paladin decks that run Murlocs? Probably not. Um, another application of this is, you know, tutoring cards from your deck. Um, so if we're talking Holy Wrath Paladin style, this can thin your deck quite a bit. The problem is, if you draw the Murlocs, they don't get drawn, and there's no way you can run two of these in your deck. So you run like one. Most game, like half the time you'll draw it a little late, and you'll probably draw most Murlocs before this. So you have to run enough Murlocs so that on average when you draw this, it still pulls a decent amount, which I still don't think is that great. So I, I think this card won't really see play with the current available card pool. You could Prismatic Lens it, but then like you're running a, so let's say you're running a full... For, first of all, how many Murlocs are there available for, for Paladin? So 22 neutral... neutral um, 22 ne neutral Murlocs. So you'd have to run... Let's say you put those, two, those in, plus the Reborn Murloc, plus the Fish Flinger. 
you have 26, so you have two prismatic lenses and two oh. of these cards. I still don't think that's good enough because you don't have as crazy like combos as Shaman can have right now. And it means like you cannot fight back for board, which means you could cut some cards, put on True Silver, but you don't want to put another spells because then Prismatic Lens is useless. And you still have to play Prismatic Lens on four so that you can play the Murloc thing on five. Maybe that's good enough, but I'm still kind of skeptical because how often are you going to have a very aggressive like opening into Prismatic Lens? Because if you have an aggressive opening, you're going to want to keep pushing tempo. You don't want to just give up on board for a turn and then refill on turn five. Or maybe you do, I don't know. And the other case is you don't have a great start and then you prismatic lens and you're still like kind of not doing much and then you make a big play on turn five. Ah, I'm not convinced. I don't think this is going to be very competitively viable. Anka the Buried, Rogue Legendary Minion, five mana, five, five. Battle Cry, change each Death Rattle minion in your hand into a one, one that costs one. So stat line is decent. The effect is very interesting. So it, it makes the Death Rattle minions just easier to like activate and kill off instead of you know buffing them which has some applications primarily what comes to mind is mechathun right you change this to one mana one one you myras you draw your whole deck you just play this and backstab it or you play it and shiv it or something so that seems very powerful now is this gonna be even if this is your last card you can draw this you can play it walk the plank it Play the one mana Mechathun and backstab it. So like, even if this is your last card, you still have ways of, of killing off the Mechathun. The question is whether or not Mechathun Rogue is going to be a thing. Um, and I don't think it will be. If it is, I don't think it'll be a tier 1 deck. Because Rogue kind of struggles with staying alive, and especially with Vanish like leaving. Maybe if Vanish is around, you could run you could run Mechathun and it's a bit better. But there's, there's other applications for this as well, right? Obviously, every single card that says Death Rattle, right? But having all these death rattles that cost one mana and are one ones aren't really that like powerful, right? Like there's a couple instances, like Karen would be fine, Whelps would be fine. But then you're already starting to run I guess you could run a more death rattly version then, because these two cards are still available. Maybe this gives leeway for some sort of death rattle rogue. I know we were, Boar Control was playing a lot of this earlier on, Death Rattle Rogue. Maybe this, I think the thing is we lose eggs, right? Devil Star Egg's gone. So you have, what other powerful Death Rattles could you run? I don't know, that's a thought for a different day. But this card in itself, I think is good. I just don't think it's gonna be at least from what I can see at a glance, currently competitively viable. There might be some sort of Death Rattle Rogue deck you could build, um, but it's gonna struggle with healing. And I mean, it, maybe there are enough anti-aggro tools to where you can make this run, but I, I still don't know how powerful it will be, right? It's just a bit too slow. Rogue is better, like fast, tempo-y stuff. Splitting Axe. Four mana, three, two, Shaman weapon. Battle Cry, summon copies of your totems. Let's take a quick look at what totems we have after we spell it properly. So applications. Flame Tongue, not really seeing play right now, and I don't think we're gonna see a super tokeny version of, of Shaman, although maybe we do if there are more lackeys. Uh, thoughts. Menotide, pretty good. Amalgam, technically decent if you copy this. Serpent Ward, not so much. So we currently have two totems that I wanna copy. Question mark on the flame, flame tongue, probably not. And we also saw Evil Totem. So this is another one I want to copy. Okay, Let, let's kind of plan out our game plan. Turn two, we play a totem. It doesn't die. We coin this out, or we make a turn three play, and then we play this on four. I don't think that's going to happen that frequently. I think people are going to try to fight for your board and kill your totem. Obviously the nut scenario is like you play Evil Totem, Mana Tide, and then this on four, or Evil Totem, Amalgam, and this on four. There's just not enough totem support. And I don't think running this just for the Evil Totem combo is gonna be good enough. I'm not convinced about this card. There might be some other cards they have in mind to, to, to print that might make this a bit more viable, but I, I don't think this is gonna be um, played. It does seem a bit too slow. World Kickmaster. 
uh, Rogue Minion, two mana, one, two. Whenever you play a combo card, add a random combo card to your hand. Okay, value generator, seems cool. Let's look at combos. It's card, not spell, right? It's card. Cold Blood, Ringleader, Eviscerate, Buccaneer, Edwin, Miscreant, Headcrack, Perdition's Blade, SI7 Agent, Raiding Party, Crazed Chemist, Kidnapper. So currently there's 12 combo cards. How, <coughs> excuse me, how many of these do we see play right now? Let's say, okay, there's 12 combo cards. You could play this, it's not awful. So one, two, three, four, five. So five good things. Let's count acceptable cards. One, two, two. So five good cards, two acceptable cards, and then you have cards you never wanna play. Like this doesn't work with your deck. This doesn't work with your deck most of the time. Head cracks kind of just slow. Chemist is a little too slow, although it does give you value. So it's a good value generator. Also, all the combo cards aren't like super, super cheap, like one mana stuff, right? So it's gonna be a while before you can like really go off with this. I think the card's fine, but I don't think it fits with what we currently have in Rogue. So I don't really think it's gonna be, see, it's gonna see play, yeah. I'm not, I'm not convinced. The card is cool. I, I think it's. I think it is interesting, but I don't think it'll be competitively viable. Next, hooked scimitar or scimitar. Uh, three mana, two two weapon. I'm assuming this is rogue because it's a combo. So this is another thing that would get. I mean, this this gives you six good options now, but still, I don't think that's enough to make it viable. Um, sorry, three mana, two two weapon. Combo gain plus two attack. So if you just look, if you look at it, let's say the combo's not there. Let's say it's the combo goes off. You'll be playing this as a 3-mana 4-2 weapon, which is pretty good. It's like a Deadly Poison Baku weapon, which is very powerful. Um, and you do run cheap enough stuff in the deck, like Lackeys, for example, or Backstabs, that you could run this um, in a like slightly more aggressive rogue deck, right? And you could also run this with Raiding Party instead of Waggle Pick. Or would you still run... You probably wouldn't run both because you want to make sure you get one or the other. Or do you care... You could throw this in as like a third weapon in Waggle Pick Rogue, maybe. I'm not sure. Or if you don't want to run Waggle Pick Rogue. I mean, I don't. I'm not good at Rogue decks. The card is good. I just don't know if this is good enough to run over Waggle Pick. It's probably not, because you, you like the step off the Waggle Pick. And if you're playing Writing Party, you want the Waggle Pick. I think this card is good, but I don't think it's, it'll see play over other things. Like, if you randomly generate this, you're not too sad about it. But there's not that many ways to randomly generate it either. Like Stolen Steel and then like the this guy, which you're not running anyways. So I, I don't really think this will see play. This does mean you can run Thugs though, that's a fair point. And it still works with Dread Corsair. Like you just, yeah. I'm still not convinced this will like take over Waggle Pick or anything. And I don't think you wanna run that many weapons in the deck. You could throw in like one, just so you have three weapons. That way if you, you know, draw one before the raiding parties, I don't know, but I mean, you don't even care if you draw one before the raiding parties, because usually you kill them before the second one, the second raiding parties, active. I mean, sometimes you have games where you have both raiding parties, and it's really cool. But I'm not sure. This is a maybe for me. Mogu Cultist, neutral one mana one one. This is a really cool card. Battle Cry. If your board is full of Mogu Cultists, i.e., seven of them, sacrifice them all and summon Highkeeper Raw. And Highkeeper Raw is a 2020 that at the end of your turn it deals 20 damage to all enemies so your entire enemy board and the enemy hero this is a really cute card this seems very difficult to work because you need seven mogu cultists but people are going to run this in meme decks not competitively viable um this does go in the one drop pool for like jar vendor which is kind of cute too but not competitively viable but very fun and i'm kind of interested to see if I, we can make this work at some point diseased vulture Four mana, three, five, um, Warlock minion. It's a beast. After your hero takes damage on your turn. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that'd be crazy if it was on your opponent's turn. Um, summon a random three cost minion. Three cost minions are pretty decent. And that's like real, I mean, you don't have that many ways to damage yourself, but like even this plus Spirit Bomb on five is pretty cool. This plus Flame Imp, pretty cool. Like how many damaging, um, why? I mean, Warlock. 
Dark Possession, Flame Imp, Spirit Bomb, Blood Witch. That I mean, you now Blood Witch is kind of weird. You'd have to have it on the board already, but Pit Lord. There might be Crystallizer. So there, there's a I mean, Elven Archer for all you care. But even just tapping, I think this is a powerful card. Um, this might be something that you do run if you want to make like a more mid rangey zoo where you still have like the aggro package and then like as you get on later in the game you can just run this and then your like deal damage cards are, are a bit more impactful right because first of all it's like a flame imp but then you also summon a three drop but it, it is a bit combo right I, I think the card is good it might make zoo a bit less consistent if you're trying to stray away from the super super aggro version but like this you could take you could play around with the deck and see if it actually works it's gonna be a maybe for me I think the deck definitely has uh, potential, but again, I mean, it's so hard to rate these cards because like the card is very powerful, but if you look at whether or not it'll be run, it's really dependent on what the meta is and what other people are running and what archetypes are viable themselves. Next, Neferset Ritualist. Two mana, two, three, neutral minion. Battle cry, restore adjacent minions to full health. Pretty powerful, right? Stat line's decent. It's two mana, two, three, nothing crazy. The battle cry is gonna be kinda hard to get off. If we're thinking constructed, it's not too often minions stick around for that long. If minions stick around for a long time, you're either just winning the game already and you don't care about the healing, or they're gonna die because, you know, brawl, shield slam, like stuff gets traded in. Um, there's not that much value trading going on in the current meta, except for very board-centric decks. And in board-centric decks, I don't know if you want to run this, because it's just the 2-mana two 2-3. Two, and, like, you already have to be in a situation on board where you can value trade and then heal up, which isn't always the case. It has some interesting applications, too. Like, you could run this in Priest, um, with Blademaster, for example, um with damage Stegatron. So this could be used in Priest, which is kind of cool, but it would also dilute the pool if you're running uh, Pomp, whatever you call it. Psycho Pomp. So this this might help make Priest viable though. The thing is, it's kind of slow, right? It'd be, it would be like a turn five Blade Master plus Ritualist or a turn seven Stegatron plus Ritualist. It's kind of, you could still go like Blade Master, let it die, then go Psycho Pomp, trade off, and then Neferset Ritualist. But it's becoming a little more convoluted, and at that point your opponent can try to play around that stuff. But it, it does give some oomph to the deck. You could also run this in stuff like Druid, where you run big taunt minions and then heal them, um, which also works for like Lucent Park stuff, because it, it heals a lot. Um, it seems really interesting. I, again, it's going to be a maybe, but I don't think this card is bad. I think this card is playable. But again, dependent on what cards we see. Into the fray. One mana warrior spell. Give all taunt minions in your hand plus two plus two. So this is compared to something like Bolster, where Bolster was give your board plus two plus two of taunt minions, and it costs two mana. This is much less conditional because it works on minions in your hand before you play them. So they don't have to stick around. Cost one mana. You can play this on one and then play just stuff on two. Like imagine this on one. It's a double gold trap footman. It's turn two. You have two three fours. It's insane. This card seems very powerful. And I think they're trying to give some sort of direction for, for warrior other than just, you know, the standard bomb route, which I think is really interesting. And, and maybe it sees play. Um, this plus the Armageddon is kind of nice. And there's also a couple more cards we'll see coming up that work really well with this. Um, but I think this card is very good. Like, this this card is very good. Um, I'll, I'll come back to talk about this a bit more once we get to the other warrior cards. Um, Anubisath Warbringer. 9 mana, 9, 6. Stat line's kind of questionable. Um, death Rattle, give all minion Neutral minion. Uh, death Rattle, give all minions in your hand, plus 3, plus 3. So this, plus, like, the rogue thing is really nutty, right? If you can make this a 1 mana, 1, 1 with this Death Rattle, that's insane but it seems kind of conditional and slow. Um, by itself, it really won't see play. This is kind of interesting to think how it'll work with Conj stuff, but people are only running Astromancer anyways, so the nine mana slot won't really come into play that much. But interesting card, it really won't see play that much. You could run it in that Rogue Death Rattle deck if you can 
pull off the uh, if you can pull off the anchor, but otherwise I don't think you'll see play much. This is another card you could run in this warrior taunt deck we're talking about. Um, Infested Goblin, neutral minion, three mana, two three, taunt, and death rattle. Add two one one scarabs with taunt to your hand. So stat line's not great, reminiscent of. Uh, infested Torn costs one less, but you don't spawn the 2 2, you get the 2 1 1 taunts in your hand, which is interesting because it can block, you know, big boys. You, you drop the two scarabs, can, can soak up some damage. You hold them, you can buff them with Into the Fray, and it's pretty powerful. And it's also just three different taunt bodies for one card, which is kind of cool too. Granted, two of them are just 1 1s. Um, I don't think this card is broken, I don't think it's unplayable. I think it's somewhere in the middle. But it will it becomes a lot stronger in, in this Taunt Warrior deck we're, we're talking about. So it depends on, on what we see people play. Next, Frightened Flunky. 2 mana, 2-2 two, two Warrior Minion, Taunt, and Battlecry Discover Taunt Minion. This is insane. Like, this is actually insane. Let's take a look at taunts. There's some bad ones. Let's put, so gold chair, footman, shield bearer, gnome, grunt. But even these ones, like you discover cheap taunt and buff it with the into the fray. That's still pretty good. Phantom militia. The second part of the, like the, the the echoes don't actually get the buff, so that's not that relevant. Bronze gatekeeper is a three mana three seven would be nutty. Grizzly is a three mana five five. Like picture all of these getting buffed. Sure, you're not always gonna get them buffed because you don't always have into the fray, but you could still hold on to them for like Armagadillo or when you draw into the fray. Like there's there's a lot of good taunts you can get. Even like this, like a four mana two ten is like pretty fine. It's not gonna kill stuff, but it, it stops a lot of damage coming in for a long time. So the taunt pool is pretty diluted now. It's I think it's a bit bigger than when it was in the warrior quest. Yeah, and there's still some bad stuff you can hit. Like, you don't want to hit too expensive things off of it. But even like this is fine, and, and you just play it later. And then you... Oh, this doesn't... You don't actually get this. So there's no current taunts in Warrior. So now Warrior will also have a Frightened Flunky and the arm. You can even discover an Armagadillo, which is kind of cool. But I think this card is insane. At least in the taunt deck we're talking about. By itself, you probably don't run this in, like, Bomb Warrior. You could run in Control Warrior, but I don't think it'd be that great. You might be able to make like a hybrid control taunt deck, but again, I'm not sure. This this feels more tempo-y than, than control-y. Again, a lot of support for this taunt warrior, so it'll be interesting if we can make it work, um, but, but definitely a good card. Wasteland Assassin, five mana, four, two, stealth and reborn. This is pretty interesting. So compare this to something like a Jungle Panther, three mana, four, two, you don't really see it played that much but this gives you kind of two of those in this in like a death rattle sense right you play this on five you trade it off it comes back as another uh four two stealth or it'll be four one stealth at that point kind of slow is the problem the value is not bad but it, it, it's kind of slow you could run this in something like paladin if you're trying to complete the paladin quest and then you run like light forge blessing on it it's not terrible you don't heal for that much but it's some sort of guaranteed heal if, if your opponent doesn't just... Like, your opponent can't interact with this most of the time. I, I don't think it's good, but it's interesting at least. Stealth with Reborn. Druid Quest. Untapped Potential. Um, end four turns with any unspent mana. Oh, if this is just any unspent mana, this is really cool. Because it allows for some interesting decision making too. Anyways. End four turns with some unspent mana. Reward Osirian Tear. And this changes the hero power to you choose one card, so have both effects combined. Um, I don't know how many of you have played the Brawl, but when you face the guy that has both choose effects, it's kind of annoying. Not all the time, but it has some good applications. Let's look at choose ones. Crystal power doesn't really work too well. You don't want to deal two damage to minion and restore five health to it. This is okay, but it's not great. Fits more in tokeny decks. Decent. Decent. Is it minions or cards? Cards. Decent. Three mana, four, four, rush taunt. Really decent. Really decent. 
Although I don't know if it's confirmed that works with it. Okay, but you probably still don't run this. Decent, decent, decent. Kind of slow, but maybe. And then we're getting to really expensive stuff where this would be fine. This might be okay, but it's still kind of slow. This would be okay, but it's still kind of more combo so you don't want to run it by itself because you still just want to run cards that are standalone fine. So there's some options, but none of these are like game breaking. So while I do think this is good, I don't think it's like you have to run this. Like it's it's a way you could take Druid decks, but I don't think it's super powerful, at least with the cards we have available. Um, we see a couple, we see one more choose one here. Hidden Oasis, summon a 6-6 Ancient with Taunt or restore 12 health. But still, I don't think this plus the current available choose ones are enough to like break Druid. Bees! Uh, exclamation mark. Three mana Druid spell. Choose a minion, summon four, one one bees that attack it. This card is insane. It's removal. It can make stuff if the minion you're targeting has less than whatever, four health. Um, it has combo applications with Cult Master, uh, overkill minions. Um, Flashing and ghoul, I guess. This this card is just insane. Like it's it's this this card is the nuts. You'll run this in almost every deck, every druid deck anyway. This card is just really good. Generally, we've seen a lot of powerful cards that are like kill a thing, make a thing. This doesn't always make a thing, but sometimes it makes things. Most of the time, it kills things. It's like three mana deal four, and any excess is just left alive, like as 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 board for you, which is kind of cool. I think this is pretty good. You can even bees your own guy. Like if you have a mech or something and you're playing this in, 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 in aggro, you could just bees it. It's pretty cool. At least the Enlightened. Five mana, five, five, Druid minion. Battle cry. If your deck has no duplicates, duplicate your hand. So this is interesting. This could allow for some cool combo stuff if you draw your whole deck and then like Mally, Moonfire, 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 Moonfire them. Um, the thing is, like, do you really need that? It can work with Lucent Bark too, but this would probably be like a sideboard type thing you play in, uh, like against Warrior. Like after you draw enough cards, this lets you get more Lucent Bark procs. But by itself, I don't know if it's good enough. Like stuff like Malagos Druid, I tried making it work, same thing back in Worlds, or right before Worlds. It just wasn't consistent enough. Like. It's very, very difficult to make the deck super, super good in combo -y, while still very good against aggro. Maybe you can do it now with some extra tools. But uh, this is probably a maybe for me. The, the effect is very powerful, don't get me wrong. But it's a matter of how consistently Druid can get to the end of their deck. Maybe you can with like Gadget or Cult Master and this stuff, um, which is why it's a maybe. Um, I'd like to be proven wrong, but I, I I'm leaning towards it probably won't see play. Hidden Oasis, six mana druid spell. Choose one, summon a six six ancient with taunt or restore 12 health. It's pretty interesting. Six mana six six taunts, probably okay. In druid, if you have wild growth, this is a bit more acceptable. acceptable. And the restore 12 health is kind of like a nice oh shit button, but paying six mana to heal for that much, like it's it's worse efficiency than healing touch, right? And you don't currently see healing touch, so most of the time you're just gonna want to play the six mana six six ancient. That's why you have this card, and sometimes you just heal for twelve because you're scared. You probably run this in Lucent Bark. It's you don't have that many six plays in, in Lucent Bark Druid, so this gives you something to do, and it's an extra heal if you don't want to make a six six. So I think this will be see some play. I don't think it'll be tier one though. Okay, Dino Tamer Brand. 7 mana, 2, 4. Minion. Battle cry. If your deck has no duplicates, summon King Crush. So it's like a 7 mana, 2, 4, plus an 8, 8 with charge. Which is powerful, but I think the restriction is too much for like Hunter decks. Even if you start running some sort of like controlling Hunter with some of the new tools you see here, you'll be, run you'll be wanting to run like two copies of this stuff, so this doesn't seem that great, unless it's like super later on after you've drawn most of the duplicates. And I don't know if that's kind of how late game you want to take the deck. Because even in Control Hunter, you kind of like build your way up to your big boys and then you kill them. So this is probably a no for me. But it's interesting and maybe there's some way you can make it work. But I don't think you can make a Highlander Hunter deck 
work right now. Wild Bloodstinger. Six mana, six nine. Uh, Hunter minion. It's a beast. Battle Cry. Summon a minion from your opponent's hand. Attack it. This is insane. Like, this is incredibly insane. You can stop combos from happening. You can pull out Boom. You can pull out Alex Clockwork Goblins. You can pull out Cadgar. You can pull out Shrivala. This, this card is insane. Very slow, because it costs six mana, but it's insane. I think this will see competitive play. Maybe not in mainless, but you, you definitely have this in like sideless and stuff. Yeah, this card is just the nuts. Next, Scarlet Webweaver. Six mana, five, five. Hunter minion. Battle cry, reduce the cost of random beast in your hand by five. Now this does say random. So you have to be careful playing this with like, you know, decks where you're also running spring paw and stuff like that, like hyena. Because you want to hit something impactful. You want to hit something like a wild blood stinger. You want to hit something like a tundra rhino. So this can let you this can let you do OTKs with Tundra Rhino where you do like Tundra Rhino double unleash the beast like on Zuljin stuff. Um, but even just playing it normally is fine, right? Even if you don't like OTK them, like you play this on six and then you play a Rhino, and for six mana you have this charging and the Rhino charging. This card is really good. I think both of these will see play. Hunter's Pack, three mana Hunter spell. Add a random Hunter beast secret and weapon to your hand. So if you look at the current Hunter Beasts, Shimmerfly, good. Springpot, good. Timberwolf, good. Mastiff, not great, but playable. Hyena, good. Lynx, not awful, but you could make it work. Buzzard, kind of eh. Rhino, good. Skitter, not great, but still could be useful. High main. Slow, but good. And King Crush, really slow, but eh, it's King Crush. Plus these two as well. So the Beast Pool, pretty good. Let's check out the Secret Pool. Explosive Trap, pretty situational. Freezing Trap, generally decent. Misdirection, situational, but still okay if you're playing like a slower game where you want your opponent's minions to hit each other. Rat Trap. Decent, Snake Trap, decent, Snipe, decent. And we now have one more here, Pressure Plate, which is decent, which is pretty good. We'll get to that too. So Secret Pool, pretty decent. You get a random one, most of the time you can try to make it work. And Weapon. Currently we have Hatchet, Eaglehorn Bow, and Gladiator's Longbow, I believe. Yes. Slow, but in, a, in a, like a slower value type of deck, this isn't awful because you don't take damage and you get two swings out of it. Hatchet, cheap, flexible. Bow, decent, and you get a secret to use it with as well. So this card is also really good. And again, we see them trying to print like good value cards for Hunter so that we don't make it super aggressive and super valuable, but it makes the Hunter take a slower game plan. This with Zul'jin is nice refill too, especially if you cut stuff like Unleash the Beast if you want to put in something else instead in the 6 mana slot. This card's good, but slow. Um, that being said, current Beast Hunter can't have those super aggressive openings where they have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then they start killing you. But they also have slow, slower plays where they go like, you know, Master's Call, set up a combo with cheap minions. So this could be like, not Master level, not Master's Call level of power, but still very powerful in terms that it gives you a lot of gas. Um... And if you're going to make a slower Hunter deck like this, you could very well see Hunter's Pack in there. Basically, I think that, sorry, I think this card will see play. Pressure Plate, new Hunter Secret, two mana spell. Secret, after your opponent casts a spell, destroy a random enemy minion. This card's insane. Like, holy crap. Obviously, one of the things that come to mind is, oh my god, this kills a giant, you know, against Conjure Mage. But for two mana, it's like not a control deadly shot, but your opponent's not going to be running many minions that they want to just eat the pressure plate with, right? Like, Zoo would be the only deck where it's like, eh, whatever, I lose a 1-1 one, one, or like a 2-2 a two, two or something. But even with Warrior, I mean, you're not going to jam this on two when they play a Rover, right? But like this killing a Dynomatic, fine. A Devastator, fine. Like Zilliax, something like that. Like, 
this killing anything is good. Obviously, there's a huge range of stuff it can kill. Like, if you hit a giant, you're super happy. If you hit a 1-1 one -one from Warlock Zoo, not too happy. But the card is powerful, and it rewards, like, skill timing as well. Thinking about what your opponent's going to do and whether or not the pressure play works. That being said, you might not want to run just this in your deck because... Rat Trap's a bit different because Rat Trap still limits the cards that your opponent's playing. This is it can be played around a bit easier, I think. So you might run this and Rat Trap. But getting this randomly off of Hunter's Pack is kind of cute too because your opponent's like, I hope it's not Pressure Plate. But this card is really nuts. Even if you don't run it, if you run Hunter's Pack and get it like a one-seventh of the time or something like that, it's, it's still pretty good. So all these Hunter cards are insane. Curious to see if a Control or like a slower... Hunter comes about because of this. Okay, Puzzle Box of the Oxeron. 10 mana, cast 10 random spells, targets chosen randomly. Um, probably one of the funnest cards in the set. Not competitively viable. Um, applications, it'll pop up in Cyclone Mage now because you get it off of Cyclone sometimes. Um, you don't run this in your deck normally unless you just want to have fun. Is it a nerf or a buff to Cyclone Mage in that sense? Most of the time it'll be a nerf because you try to win the game before turn 10 most games. Like, just the way they play out, you normally win before turn 10. Sometimes on turn 11, 12-ish. Um, against Warrior, sometimes you take it much later. But most of the time, this will be an unplayable card in your hand. And when it is playable, you probably want to spend your mana on other stuff. That being said, it is a mini Yogg, so it's like an oh shit button. Which means if you do randomly get it, and you're behind, it can turn the game around sometimes. But I think on average, it's a nerf, because... It's a card you can't use off of Cyclone. Um, so it won't see play, but it, it has some applications because it's it can be randomly generated. Raid the Sky Temple. This is the Mage Quest. Cast 10 spells, and the reward is Ascendant Scroll. It's a 2 mana. Add a random mage spell to your hand, and it costs 2 less. I think this card's bad. This is something you want to run in like a value-oriented mage. And Cyclone Mage has a lot of value, but it's not in itself a value-oriented deck necessarily. I also don't want this in my opening hand playing Cyclone Mage because part of the deck's weakness is its inconsistency. So if I lose one card in my mulligan now because I'm playing this, it's pretty bad. Like 10 spells, you probably won't complete it till turn like five, six, seven, unless you have a really nutty Sork Cyclone turn, which isn't that often even if you hard mulligan for them. And even then, after you go Sork Cyclone, you probably get like five spells out, six, if it's like a really good one. And then you still have to play more cards after that. And they have to do stuff too. You can't just play a random Nova just cause. So the, the reward is great. I just don't think it's good enough in current Cyclone Mage. So if you wanna run this in like a Control Mage, sure, but I don't think Control Mage is gonna be a thing. It is fun, agreed, but I, I don't think it's competitively viable. Reno the Relicologist. Six mana, four, six. That's a familiar stat line. Battle Cry. If your deck has no duplicates, deal 10 damage randomly split among all enemy minions. So it can't go face. Relatively consistent board clear. The thing is, you need to have it on six, and you need to have no duplicates in your deck. I guess you can play it after six, too, but. Powerful effect. I don't think it'll see play, though. It might see more play near the end of this rotation. Near the end of the year of, uh, what are we, in the Dragon? But right now, I don't think there's enough powerful one ofs that Mage can run to, to justify putting Reno in. Arcane Flak Mage. 2 mana, 3, 2 minion. After you play a secret, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. Stat line is decent for a 2-drop. The effect is very powerful, and it's enemy minions, not your own minion. So let's look at, look at secrets. And this is after you play it. So you would play Flak Mage, let's say on 2, and then you play a secret on 3. Um, or you play it on 5, like Flak Mage secret, for like a, a mini blast wave type thing, but without card generation. So let's look at Mage secrets. Counterspell. Could be played in the meta. Half the time it hits a coin, you're kind of sad about that. Ice Barrier, in this slow deck... Like, in, in a slow control type mage deck, sure, you would run this. Or, like, a freestyle mage for some extra health. You could run this. And it makes sense with this if you want to clear the board. So, sure. Let's say one and a half secrets you want to run. Entity, not that great. Can be played around pretty easily. Especially in, like, an open decklist type um, 
tournament style, although we can consider the ladder implications as well. On ladder, it would be a bit better. I'll give this, I'll say this is like half a secret. So there's two, like, let's say one secret that you could run this with, two that you might run it with. Spellbender, pretty specific. Now, the fact that this is harder to proc might make it better for the next card we see, but we'll get to that later. But still not something you would probably run your deck on average so far. Splitting Image, you could run this. Um, you don't really want this card to be Splitting Image because it doesn't give you that much value, so I don't know. Vaporize, eh. So the current Mage Secret Pool isn't great, but this effect is decent. Now two damage might not clear enough stuff that you want to clear on turn five, so this could be kind of questionable and it's pretty easy to play around. So I'm gonna jot this down as a maybe. If there's a better secret that gets revealed, maybe this gets bumped up, but this is probably maybe for me. You also wouldn't run this in something like Cyclone Mage, so you'd need another deck to run it in. So it's gonna be a maybe. Cloud Prince, five mana, four, four. Also an elemental. Battle Cry, if you control a secret, deal six damage. So this means you have to have a secret up already that hasn't been procced, or you play this on turn eight. Now, if you play it on turn eight, you develop a secret, you develop a 4-4, and you fireball something. It sounds decent. Turn eight's pretty far, and that means you have to hold a secret till then, or you have to play a secret before then and play this on five. Secrets that won't get procced before this. This might not get procced, but probably does get procced. This will get procced. This likely gets procced. This won't get procced, so this is something you could run. This probably won't get procced, so you could run this. And Vaporize probably gets procced. So there's like two secrets currently that don't get procced most of the time. Which, I mean, Spellbender and, and Splitting Image by themselves aren't super impactful anyways. But you could run these two, sorry, that and Spellbender, and then play Cloud Prince. And that will be a pretty decent tempo swing on five. Weakness being, is doesn't deal you know AOE damage, it's single target damage. So against more aggressive decks, this isn't the absolute nuts and still doesn't fit in current cycle mage, so you'd need another type of mage to run it in. Effect is powerful, but still kind of a maybe for me to, based on the current secret pool. Maybe if we get some sort of like mage, uh, play a random secret, that'd be kind of cool. Kind of like the Paladin Twin Spell, but without the Twin Spell. Yeah, I mean, if we had Ice Block, again, if we had Ice Block, these would be insane, but we don't have Ice Block. So they're kind of like, Powerful effects, but pretty conditional with cards that you don't really want to run your deck as it stands. You could throw in like Arcanist. I guess it works with Keysmith too. You could curve out Keysmith into this and maybe that's decent, but that's still not something you'd run at Cycle Mage. So it's still have to be a little bit different. Like maybe you run this in Con like Spectre's Mage or something. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll leave it as a maybe. I'll, I'll leave it as a maybe. And this, Tartolan Pilgrim. Eight mana, five, five, it's a turtle. Battlecry, discover a copy of a spell in your deck and cast it with random targets. Okay. Probably too inconsistent to use in Cyclone Mage, but eight mana, a lot of mana, can be conged. Um, also post Luna's Pocket Galaxy, this is one mana, which is the nuts. But let's take a look at spells you would run in Freeze Mage, for example. You probably still run Ray of Frost in Freeze Mage. You probably don't run the rest of these. So let's count spells. Ray of Frost. You probably run Frostbolt. AI. Conj. Nova. That's five. You could cut Fireball and just play more minion heavy. That's fine. Lunas. Which honestly would be terrible, but let's say six. Sometimes you draw Lunas and it's not in the pool. Blizzard, seven. So seven cards, you discover a copy of a spell in your deck. Two of them are freezes, Blizzard and Nova. So already that's almost a one in three chance you get a freeze. If you've drawn Luna, well, you're not guaranteed to get a freeze, but let's say you've drawn Lunas. Two out of six card, two out of six options will be a freeze, which is pretty powerful. Very unlikely you don't get a freeze. And even two out of seven, still likely you get a freeze. You could even like run one of Flame Strike, and then sometimes you do that instead. 
Now, again, you don't draw Lunas, this becomes a bit slower, but even like, this is just like an extra freeze as well, right? Because on top of your four spell freezes, now you could pl play this before you draw the other freezes. So it's kind of like drawing another freeze. If you draw all four freezes, unlucky, but then you have four freezes. And if you don't draw the freezes, you can play this and then you still have another freeze later. So I think this card is powerful. You'd have to type, kind of take a look at what Freeze Mage looks like post-expansion, um, though, because there's still a lot of cards that are coming out. You probably don't run these two in it. You probably don't run these, but maybe there's some other neutrals that get released, or maybe you change the cards in current Freeze Mage to align more with what the meta is. But I, I think this card is powerful. Um, again, it's not a it's not a auto-include, but it's not going to not see play. Cool card. So, I mean, so far I'm looking at these cards, I'm pretty interested. There's a lot of cool new stuff we have to play with. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Which card would I most likely cosplay to celebrate the new expansion on launch? I don't really do cosplay. I'm not good at building costumes. But if I had to choose one, probably Reno, because he looks pretty funny. He looks pretty cool. I'd have to grow out the stash a bit more, which is kind of difficult. Probably won't happen by the time the expansion comes out, but uh, it could be fun. Why is the Blizzard so hush-hush about Priest? I don't know. Maybe they just have some really cool Priest cards they want to show and they don't want to spoil it because it'll be like, oh, like when Barnes came out or something. But yeah, so that's the card review portion of the stream for today. We're going to go back to Arena after this for at least another hour and a bit. Um, if you enjoyed this, you know, shoot me a follow on Twitch, Twitter. Um, you know, I tweet when I go live. I mostly do competitive stuff like ladder. I talk about tournaments, go over lineups. Well, I don't go over lineups that much on stream, but digress. Um, yeah, sometimes we switch to arena. Sometimes we do brawl. Um, if you're interested in that sort of content, shoot me a follow. We'll see when I go live, and then we can hang out. I normally stream weekdays in the evenings for those of you just tuning in for the card review, so you guys know. Um, but sometimes, of course, I, I schedule changes, like today, for example, I did it during the day. But yeah.